Hey everyone, this is Eric Snell, the author of the Fit Businessman book. And this might be the most interesting video yet. We're going to talk about leg training under these very special circumstances. So I will go through a workout for the legs that you can do indoors without jumping and without the let's say typical women exercises that might be a little bit discouraging for guys that are used to doing heavy squats and you know putting on a lot of weights on the different leg machines in the gym because you're probably like me you like to go out and run you can do jumps and stuff outdoors or you can go to the gym you can lift a lot of weight you can go and play basketball, you can jump, play soccer. But what if you're in a cell or your apartment, call it what you want, and you can't really do jumps because it will disturb the neighbors and you don't have any equipment. How can you train the legs? You know, you're going to do burpees and, and push-ups and, and try to do pull-ups somehow. But the legs, that's, that's really a challenge. I think that's the biggest, you know, problem for me if I have to train indoors. So actually now it's been about six weeks and uh, I haven't been able to go to the gym. I've been training my legs outdoors all the time, but that's because the weather has been extremely nice. But today I'm going to go through five exercises that I do indoors, but only if necessary. If it's going to be a rainy day here and I feel like I want to train my legs, I know I can't do jumps and I need to stay in an apartment. How do I train that? How can I make it effective? Well, uh, you probably remember that I try to have these guidelines on how to make an effective workout. And my guideline is that I'm going to collect 20 sets. So regardless of what leg moves we're going to do, we're going to collect 20 sets of them. So let's say we do 10 repetitions of an exercise. At the end, we're going to make sure we have at least 20 sets. So if our body doesn't say we're ready, at least that will almost guarantee that we've done a somewhat of a, a good job. And the other trick when we're now training without any resistance is to only do unilateral exercises meaning only one leg exercises. And this has a lot of benefits, not only that the weight is heavier sort of because you're not splitting your body weight onto two legs, but it also for balance and for recruiting maybe a little bit more uh, your core and other muscles that you might be sort of compensating for if you use your both legs at the same time. Now, it also requires a little bit of psychology to carry out a workout at home, and especially for the legs, which you can't see really maybe in the mirror, like uh, if you would be doing push-ups and, and you look in the mirror and you will instantly see, you know, uh, your, your muscles uh, filling up with blood and you see veins and, and you see muscles grow. You, it's it's completely different when you train legs and you don't necessarily can look in the mirror even you don't even have a mirror that will show your legs so you gotta really uh, be ready for this type of workout and what I mean is that when we're gonna do these 20 sets it's actually gonna be 40 right because you have to do both legs and then there's different strategies on how you're gonna complete this and what I like to do is not the typical, you know, you do 10 on one leg, you do 10 on the other, 10 on one leg, 10 on the other. Uh, I'll prefer actually, if I know um, I really want to do three times 10 sets of one exercise and it, it will be mentally tough for me to do that, I would actually try to do one side first and then do the other side. Because once I done the left leg, I know I'm going to have an imbalance if I don't do the right leg, right? So that's how I can convince myself to do also the other sets. The other possibility is to do sort of a count where you do 
10 repetitions on one side, then you do 10 on the other. Then you do 9, you do 9, 8, 8, 7, 7. And you go like this. So you sort of do everything in, in one row. You're going back and forth, and, and it's, it becomes a little bit of a game. So this is just some things that you can try to keep in mind when you're going to perform your workout at home. And another trick is, of course, to use the, the clock. So let's say you always start your set at every uh, even minute. So you're going to do it, and, and you just follow the clock. You have your list of exercises. I'm going to show them here on the screen as well. And you can just sort of time it at what, you know, at four minutes you're going to do this, at six minutes you're going to do that. So, and then you just follow it. Okay, so let's get into it. The first exercise that I would do, and actually before we do the first exercise, we sort of, sort of should warm up somehow, right? I tend to use the, the uh, really the first exercise as a warm up, but what I could recommend and what I would probably do is do hip rotations, uh, either standing or laying down so on my back, uh, just putting my, my weight on my elbows and then do circles with the legs. And you see this uh, in the Fitbit Man book, you see it on the Outdoor Edition uh, DVD. This is really to open up the hips to get the full range of motion. And a lot of times you feel a little bit in your abs as well. And, and this way you're sort of warming up but the idea is to get the range of motion going. Because some of these exercises that we're going to go through, it's a lot about range of motion and um, preparation in order to perform the exercise well. So if you just jump into one of these exercises, it might be that it will feel awkward. Uh, you won't be able to perform it really uh, sort of the full distance, the full range of motion. So that's why not only do I want to have a warm-up that breaks a little bit of sweat. I actually prefer, and I think it's more important, to have the full range of motion. So you can do these type of circles. Uh, you can also do just, you know, hip rotations, standing hip rotations, but really to get the hip open. And since these five exercises are not going to be these typical, what I would say, uh, uh, women uh, workouts where you have uh, if you go on all fours and you do kicks backwards and, or, or you lift up your leg, you can here as well do, do rotations. Um, this is something I, I would say is a good warm-up. Uh, but then for the actual exercises, I would actually pick other exercises. But that's another option. If you want to warm up, you go on all fours and either you do kickbacks, uh, you do side raises with your knee or you do rotations as if you, you're, you're doing big circles with your knees. Now, the first exercise. The first exercise is a one-legged Romanian deadlift. So this is uh, a deadlift is when you weigh, lift something off the ground uh, and when you have straight legs we call it a Romanian deadlift. And the idea is that you're going to push one leg backwards and you're gonna first you can start off by not having any weights in your hand this is a, a no weights workout i would still take a book take something little maybe in my hand and from touching the uh, feet your toes just straighten up so you're standing on that one leg and you keep the other leg in the air and uh, you repeat this, you should feel this in your hamstring. So it's really more like a stretch. And here, I think this is a great way of warming up. I personally do this movement a lot of times. If I go to the gym, I have a leg day and I'm trying to warm up my body. This is one of the exercises that I like to do because it's a little bit of balancing, uh, coordination, and it feels kind of easy. It feels like a stretch and after doing a couple of sets of these, uh, you actually feel kind of nice. It's, it's not a big shock to the body. So I wouldn't start to do jumps and stuff directly. I would first start off with this type of exercise. So Romanian deadlifts here, if you want to, 
you can experiment with having uh, something in your hand. Um, I sometimes do this if I'm in a gym uh, with a barbell. So you actually have both hands and then I try to really stretch out the hamstring. Now, moving along, the second exercise is step ups. And this is something that you might not have access to in your cell, but if you have something you can actually uh, go up on, uh, here I would have, of course recommend to go take the steps up as high as possible. And since we don't have any resistance, the higher we put the, uh, the, the ladder we have to step on, the, the better it is. And um, this is also, of course, a possibility if, if you just want to warm up by stepping up, stepping down. Uh, you can do these sideways as well. Sometimes it feels more natural. Um, so you don't have to take a step back. So I think that's what people are most afraid of. You can actually step up, but then you have to take a step back and it doesn't feel comfortable. So if you turn around sideways and you step up, uh, you might feel more comfortable coming down. And here I try to actually release the foot. So when I do a step up, I try to imagine myself more like a high jumper without jumping. I'm stepping on it and the other leg, the knee of that leg goes up and the opposite arm goes up. So I'm thinking like, I'm going to jump. I'm not jumping, but that I try to follow up the movement. So it's basically not just a step up as you would do if you, you know, take the staircase to, to your office. So that's the easy one. Then we have what I call clock lunges. So lunges you can do in different directions. And when I do lunges, uh, I prefer to be a bit warmed up. Um, the older I get, it seems like the lunges are more and more difficult, especially sideways. So I tend to start with the easiest. That means taking a step backwards and then coming back to the middle. Now, when I talk about the clock, that means that you can try to play around again and you go in different directions. So if going backwards is six o'clock, then you might want to go to the right and that's then, you know, three o'clock and you can play around with the clock going in different directions and trying to go deeper uh, the, the more comfortable it feels. And this is also a, a sort of a, a warm-up movement and of course if you want to grab an old phone book or something go ahead. Or if you have a, a, you know, a water bottle or you put a, um, a backpack on you know, this is something you can, of course, do when you do these exercises. And here again, you can choose, you want to alternate the legs or not. Uh, but these are all unilateral movements. And by now, after these three movements, we should be quite warmed up. So you, we should be ready to do the most uh, challenging exercises. So that's why the fourth exercise that I would choose would be the pistol. So this is the one leg squat. And uh, here, uh, there are variations of it so that you can make it a little bit easier. This is quite challenging for a lot of people. And you're basically taking, uh, you're doing a squat, but you're letting the other foot go in front. And uh, you try to go all the way down. You don't touch the ground with your hands, and you come back up. So I actually went through this um, in the Fit Businessman book, how you can scale this uh, and learn it but basically uh, what I would start with is uh, if you have a possibility to attach a band to something so you can sort of take support from a band and do it with that then you can pull yourself with your free arm upwards and um, the other way uh, of doing this in the beginning is to stand on a box or some kind of height so that the leg that's not on the ground is free to move and you can actually have it uh, a little bit lower than if you would have it in front of you. And then sometimes it's a question of how comfortable the movement is for you. And I actually noticed that a lot of people make it easier for themselves by holding on to something. And when I say something, I mean a weight. So if you have a ankle weight that you can just grab or a small uh, 
you know, a dumbbell, just something, something small, uh, maybe a kettlebell. And with that weight, you keep it towards your shoulder and you can sort of balance yourself a little bit better when you do the, the, the pistol. Um, then there are, of course, different ways to do this. I prefer to do one leg at a time. You do one leg, you go, 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 up to full extension. Other way is, of course, you go back and forth, right, left, right, left. And um, I think it's effective both ways. And this is one exercise that I highly recommend. Um, that's something you can do without doing step ups. You really don't need anything. So uh, it, it's your body weight. Okay, it's a lot of uh, question about mobility here. You might want to try to stretch your calf first. Uh, but I think if you do these exercises first and then this is your fourth exercise, it should be all good. And then the last exercise, the fifth exercise, is the Bulgarian split squat. And uh, th this is a really effective exercise and I find myself having a hard time doing a lot of these because it's quite challenging mentally, I think. And then this exercise is actually um, quite difficult to do even without any resistance, just like the pistol squat. Uh, you have your back leg uh, on a bench or, or on a box, and basically it's sort of a one leg squat as well and here uh, again you can choose a little bit how low you go it's a unilateral movement so it requires a little bit of balancing and uh, here I would experiment about with the distance that you have from the, the bench so if you go a little bit further on um, you will feel the stretch a little bit different way and you can try to shift your body weight as well uh, if you want to be on the front uh, foot or more in the middle. And uh, one thing that you can do is uh, use a towel or something because the, the back leg uh, might get a little bit uncomfortable depending on how you bend your foot. So I would actually either recommend that uh, you rest your leg sort of on the wrist uh, and you have no sneakers on, or you put sneakers on and you rest on your, the, the back leg on your toe. You, you just gotta find a, a comfortable posi position for you. Uh, also, if you do it you know, with the couch behind you, um, you, you have to take into account that the, the, the resistance uh, might change because you're likely to put your shin on the couch and not just uh, the foot. So, I would construct uh, a workout based on these five exercises. Uh, you don't need any, any extra weight. It's unilateral. You can do it in your cell. The only thing that the step ups might need something that you can actually step up on. Um, but then again, you don't need to do all five. What you should try to do is get 20 sets. So maybe you just pick two of these and you go ahead and do 10. That's what you like. You do 10 sets of each and that's it. Maybe the next time you do two other exercises. But if you do 20, you should be good to go. And this is the unilateral exercise. There are a lot of great exercises where you can use both legs and there's plenty of nice exercises where you do jumps. Uh, but that's for another time. And also, of course, if you live in an apartment and you really want to burn those legs afterwards, if you go to the staircase and you do depth drop jumps, uh, this is with two legs though, you jump down the stairs, keep your knees at a 90 degree angle, it's going to burn really nicely after these. So, that was my indoor workout. In case, just in case we can't train outdoors, we can't train in the gym, I would train like this. Please comment below if you have any good ideas on other exercises, especially unilateral exercises where you don't need a jump. I would love to hear from you. I'm Eric Snell, the author of the Fit Businessman book, and I'll see you at work.